I'd like to look at linear patterns here. Um, this will be helpful for us for our external graphs topic at year 11, but also similar stuff to what's being covered in year 9 and year 10 for some people, so don't be surprised if you look at it for other year levels as well. Um, in linear patterns, here we're going to be looking at finding rules and making graphs about these things as well. And so we're just looking for a relationship between two sets of variables, um, and in the case when it's linear, that the change in one variable um, is constant relative to the change in the other variable. So it's kind of going up by the same amount every single time. Um, and you would get a straight line graph if you were to graph it as well. So often we, looked at, we look at kind of a situation here where they give you a physical pattern. So if you want to pretend this pattern drawn on here in blue is actually made with matchsticks, um, we want to come up with a rule to represent how many matchsticks are needed for each pattern that you build. So for instance, we need three matchsticks for the first pattern, two for the second, three for the third, fourth, etc. So our first step here, um, when we're asked to write a rule for this pattern, is that we need to find um, or make a table. If they've given you a table to fill in, use it. If not, make sure you make your own. And we are going to be putting in the pattern number here. So that is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 for my pattern number. Filling in the table here. Now the number of matchsticks I need for the first pattern is 3. And I want you to keep in mind as well, well I'm going to relate this back to y equals mx plus c in a minute, but x first, then y. Um, just so when we start to relate it to x and y variables, you remember that as well. But the p here stands for the pattern number, which is this part up here. The first pattern, the second pattern, the third pattern. And the n stands for the number of matchsticks needed. So in this case, I need three matchsticks. And in that case, I need five matchsticks for the second pattern. So one pattern takes three matchsticks. Two patterns, you need five. The third pattern, you would need seven. And we can just count those up if you're not sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's where these numbers are coming from. Fourth pattern, I've got two more matchsticks added on there, so I need nine. And for the fifth, if I was to draw it, I would need eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to get to the fifth pattern. So once you've filled in your table, the next thing I want you to look for is what we call the first difference. And what I mean by that is the difference between the terms. So how much do I go up in, up or down in, because it can be negative, how much do I uh, go up or down in between each pattern? So from 3 to 5, that is a plus 2. 5 to 7, again, plus 2. And we can see I'm doing a plus 2 the whole way through here. So once we've established that our first difference here is constant, so first diff constant, and by that I mean it's going up by the same number every time, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. It's not going up by plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, right? So it's the same number every single time. We know we're going to have a linear pattern. And that's how we check for it when we're trying to identify what kind of rule we've been given, because it won't always be linear as we move on. But if the first difference is constant, we do have a linear pattern. So it is linear. The next thing that we need to do then is to write out our rule. So much like you might think about y equals mx plus c, we're going to think about the same thing here. We need to get a rule to relate p and n. So it seems a bit counterintuitive here, but we're going to write the n first, because our y is first there. So n is equal to some number of p, and possibly plus or minus something. So we've got two gaps that we need to fill in there, using the variables out of our table. So first thing that we're going to do is take that first difference that we have found, and we're going to put it in with the p. Remember, that becomes 2 times p. So this is my plus or minus term, if you want to think about it that way. And so I know that I, I need um, an extra two matchsticks for every um, pattern that I build. And now I need to figure out if I'm missing anything. And this is going to be our extra term at the end here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check. If n is equal to Sorry. If p is equal to 1, so I'm going to use these pairs here. If p is equal to 1, do I need to add anything on to this to get um, to the 3 that I'm required? So let's take a look. That's 2 times 1. So if p is equal to 1, plug it in. 
And I need that to be equal to 3, because I'm looking at my actual table here. I know if p is 1, n should be 3, so that's what I need to get out of my rule. So checking it out, 2 times 1 is 2, plus something equals 3. So that thing I need to figure out what it is, I need to have a plus 1 here to make it equal 3. So my rule needs to become n is equal to 2p plus 1. And there's a couple of other ways to check for this too. I mean, you could pick out any other p-value. You could put in a p equals 2. Um, but p equals 1 is usually the easiest one. And another way to look at it, if you want to just visually, um, you'll notice on each of these patterns I'm adding two sticks on. So if I go to the very first pattern and I look at what has been added on every single time and highlight it, what's left over there? Just one thing? That's the plus one that you need originally. So the two yellow matchsticks are the two that you're going to have because it's the first pattern. And then you need that plus one to get you started. And another way to look at that here is on your table, your first difference was two. Take a look. How do you get to the first pattern number? Assuming this is pattern number one, what do you need there? You need another plus one to get up there. So that is one way to go about solving for this um, rule by hand. And once you've got it sorted, you should be in pretty good shape. Um, I'll also show you guys how to do this with your calculators uh, in probably another video because um, it's good to know how to do all this by hand as well. And if you need more detailed advice on this or more examples, um, I'll put a link up for all those year 9 videos that do this as well, but you can hunt them down on my YouTube channel if you need them.